Hello everybody, hello everybody. This is a success with Bob Witt Live. Please let me know if you can hear us. Today I have a guest. Please let me know that you can hear us. This is success with Bob Witt Live. I have a guest here. Please let me know that you can hear us. And I hope you are not looking the other way around. Hello everybody, this is Success with Bob Witt Live. If you can hear us, please uh, give us a thumbs up. Thank you so much everybody, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, this is Success with Bob Witt Live. In today's show, I have a guest here, his name is Tim. All right, he's an international student. For those who are intending to come and study here in the US, you're gonna hear from Tim, who is one of our beneficiaries of the Kenya Airlift program. Please let me know if you can hear us. Thank you so much, and uh, welcome to Success with Bob Witt Live. Hello everybody, hello everybody, this is Success with Bob Witty Live. In today's uh, show, we are going to talk about the life of a master's international student here in the US. And I have a guest here, his name is Tim. We're going to talk um, more about his life here in the US as an international student, alright? So if you guys can hear us, please let us know if you can give us a thumbs up. Dennis, I can see Jackie, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, this is success with Bob Witt Live. I can see Grace, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys can hear us. This is success with Bob Witt Live. You can, if you can hear us, please give us a thumbs up because we don't have our you know, earphones, so I don't know how the audio is on your end. So please let us know if you can't hear us. Okay, can see a few thumbs up. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And uh, this is success with Bob Witt Live. All right, all right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, this is success with Bob Witt Live. In today's show, I have a guest here who is an international student. Uh, he'll tell us where he's studying and all that stuff, all right? So you guys tune in. If you really want to come and study here in the US, this is the person to hear his story, okay? What uh, life is here in the US as an international student, okay? For those who are following me for the first time, my name is Bob 
Mweti, I came to the US about 10 years ago. I came here as a master's student, all right? And uh, I struggled a lot. I had so many challenges. It took me about eight good years to finally make it here in the US, all right? I like sharing my story. I think actually for those who are following me, Today I have a show that is, I have an episode that is airing on uh, Kenyan uh, uh, national TV KTN. All right, for those who follow, uh, share, um, what did what is it called? Daring abroad. All right, I'm gonna be featured on that show tonight. So please uh, don't miss it. All right. So anyways, uh, before then, uh, we're gonna talk about life here in the US for an international student, all right? And especially few people from our own uh, background, all right? I'm from Africa, I'm from Kenya, all right? And uh, I want you guys out there, if you're from that kind of background, from Africa, you know, uh, if you're not from a, a, a first world country, you know, I know you have probably a lot of questions about what life is here in the US, all right? And that's really why I normally like having this kind of show to give you that information. And that's why today I brought this guy here to give us a little bit of, you know, information about all that, all right? So, Tim, thank you so much for being with me here, all right? Pleasure being here. Thank you so much. And uh, now, you know, without any further ado, I'm going to go straight to some of the questions that I want to ask you so that you can share with the audience, right? Okay. So, tell us, when did you come to the U.S.? Hi, everyone. As you have heard, my name is Tim. Mm -hmm. I first came to U.S. this year on August 20th. Okay. Okay. That was like, this is my first semester here in U.S. So you've been here for just uh, one semester? Sure. All right. Good. Semester. And uh, how long did it take you to get here in the U.S.? You know, I know you've said you came in August, right? Yes. So how long? I mean, you didn't just wake up and then come to the U.S., right? There's usually a process. Mm -hmm. how, how was that process? How long did it take you to get here? Okay, the, the process took me like one year. Mm -hmm. I started in 2018, around August, July there. Okay. Yeah, you have uh, like preparation you have to do before you come here. It's not like you wake up and come here. Mm -hmm. When I was young, I was dreaming to come here, but I didn't know how to come here. Okay. okay. There are some preparation like you do. You need to do like an exam called GMAT. Uh -huh. It's a requirement for the schools in the U.S. Mm -hmm. If Most you're coming for your master's. Yeah, okay. coming for a master's. And you had to sit for... How long did it take you to prepare for that? I took like two and a half months. Two and a half months. Yeah, but you need to be committed. Uh -huh. It's not like... A, it's not an easy exam. You need to read a lot about it. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, what what is that GMAT exam? Because a lot of people, they don't understand these things, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we talk a lot about GMAT exam, TOEFL, SAT, and blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So how exactly is it like? Is it like math, English? What, what is it? Can you tell us a little bit more? Oh, it's a combination of mathematics, uh -huh. uh, grammar, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, integrate reasoning. You need mm -hmm. to, like, to reason mm -hmm. some of the things they ask for you. Okay, yeah. so... Like for example, the math, is it like college math or is it like high school math? What kind of math is it? Mostly is high school math. High school math. Yeah, even the people like who are fresh from school are the best to do that exam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, okay, mm -hmm. good, good. Now, how has been your journey through the airlift program? Now, for the, for the audience there, out there, the uh, team is our first beneficiary of our Kenya airlift program. Okay, and uh, I, you know, we want to hear from you, like, how has been the journey for you through this program, the Kenya Airlift program? What can you tell the audience? Okay, the journey has been smooth, as I said, I started like one year ago before I joined here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you join the program, the Kenya Airlift program, mm -hmm. you get to have guidance mm -hmm. from, the, from the point you start yeah, to from the, the to point the you start. Okay. Uh, you, you, you are able to be guided how to apply for the schools, mm -hmm. how to go through that whole process of doing the exam. They guide you. Okay. They give you books mm -hmm. to read. Okay. They do preparation. Mm -hmm. They also guide you for your visa interview. Mm -hmm. So my journey, if I was on my own, it would, be, it would have been difficult. Mm -hmm. But through the guidance I got from the Kenya Leaf program, mm -hmm. I can say it has been smooth. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Now, how was your, you've talked about also preparing you for your visa, right? How was your visa experience? Tell us, 
you know because mm -hmm. a lot of africans a lot of kenyans they go to that embassy they get out of there they don't have a visa they start crying they start casting like how was the experience tell us a little bit about that the visa interview process well, truly speaking the visa the america to get an american visa is not easy Mm -hmm. I can remember that day I went for the interview. Mm -hmm. The five students who were in front of me, they were all denied. All denied visas. All, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the three students behind me uh -huh. on the queue, they uh -huh. were all denied. Wow. Yeah. But I can say on my side, I was lucky to, because when you join the Kenya Lift program, mm -hmm. you are guided on the, they get you you are, you are they prepare you to do the visa interview okay there are a lot of preparation i remember we spoke before the interview yes you told me some of the question i was expecting to be given okay. and there okay. were the exact question i was asked okay why you why you kind of like scared you know did you did, i mean you know because a lot of people if, i mean so many people when they go to that embassy right you can have all the um, you know all the information about where you come we are coming to study you know you maybe you've been coached like did you still have a little bit of some anxiety maybe or were you scared a little bit about the whole process it's normal for a person to be scared okay. when we are going to whichever mm -hmm. interview yes if it's visa if it's job yeah but on my side, like I said, I was confident. Mm -hmm. Confident is very important for uh, when you're going for the visa interview. Mm -hmm. Because like those interviewers, they normally look at you. Mm -hmm. Apart from having the paperwork, having the knowledge where you're going to, mm -hmm. they look at your confidence. Levels. Yeah. I mean, the way you present yourself, right? Yes. You know, that, mm -hmm. you know, that initial contact with the visa officer and how you present yourself how you articulate you know the reasons why you are coming here that's really what matters a lot right sure. because about i've also heard from our other airlift student who just got their visas mm -hmm. and they say that um, you know most of the time actually they don't even look at your documents you know it's all about what you tell them right yes true so did, did they ask you like okay give us this give us that give us that. because a lot of people they go to that embassy with so many documents you know like, you know but they end up not even being asked to present to, to produce anything was it the same case with you yeah it was the same case okay i remember i carried some supportive document it's mm -hmm. good to carry them yes although you don't know if they ask or not yes. but they normally ask like for your passport your i20 yeah and your uh, yeah because of yeah. course they need those ones but the yeah. other supporting documents they didn't even like ask you you know you know provide us these and all and all no that. they didn't yeah. all right cool now um tell us you which school are you studying i'm studying in the northern part of us uh -huh. which in, uh, state in a state uh, called pennsylvania pennsylvania okay and the school's name the school's name is indiana university of pennsylvania indiana university of pennsylvania ah, okay mm -hmm. by the way those who are uh, following us i went to the same school uh you know it's my <laughs> it's indiana university of pennsylvania i went to exact same program that he's doing okay mm -hmm. about 10 years ago all right so exact same that's the school that i went to okay now what are you studying there what are you taking i'm studying uh, mba mm -hmm. as a master's in business administration okay yeah it's a very marketable program yes yeah all right okay and uh you know how are the classes like for an mba program like when do you usually have the classes how many classes do you have in a day tell us a little bit about that Okay, the American system here is quite different from the Kenyan one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember in Kenya, mostly, we used to have like classes, my undergrad used to have like classes every day. Mm -hmm. But here we only have like three, three, three I have, I'm taking three units. Mm -hmm. I have only three, I'm taking a class like in three days in a week. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have two days free. Yeah. And the classes that you are taking, you are taking them in the evening. Yeah, all of them start from 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Yeah, to 9 p.m. Oh. Mm -hmm. So you can actually you can actually work during the day and then go to class in the evenings. Yeah, there's a lot of time during the day. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, even some of my students are full-time employees. Okay. Some of the organizations, so they only come for classes in the evening. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can you tell the audience now 
like you're saying you have three classes is this the, is that the minimum requirement that you have to do can, or can you even do more yeah for an international student for you to remain in status in us you have to take three units per semester mm -hmm. but you can be able to do more you can do four up to five up to five if you are a graduate student you can do up to five okay in you've talked about something mm -hmm. out of status mm -hmm. someone out there they don't know about this what is that what does that mean, out of status? What does it mean for an international student like you? Okay. When you get the visa, mm -hmm. you get a F, like mine is an F1 student, student visa. visa. Mm -hmm. And for for I to remain as a student, I have to do at least three units per semester. Mm -hmm. if to you still do, remain as an F1 student? Yeah. As an F1, with an F1 status? Yeah. Okay. If you do less, like two, mm -hmm. Uh, you can be reported and then you, that means you'll not be on status. That's out status. So you're you're basically illegal, kind of? Yeah. Like you're doing things the, the illegally? Yeah. Okay, and it can bring a lot of, you know, issues. Yeah, if you are noticed, you can be deported. Unless Good. if it is your last semester in school. That's okay. like when they allow you to do less, less than, than three. three. Yeah. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. <clears throat> so tell a little bit about... Now, you said, um, you, you have told me like you work, right? Yes. So tell me about what you do as far as work is concerned. I know you are taking your uh, classes, you have three classes, mm -hmm. and also you work. Tell us a little bit about more about that. For anyone who is out there who wants to know, like, you know, can you be able to work, you know? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, I thank God uh, during my application to come here to join the Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I uh, through the Kenya Lift program guidance, I applied for a program called uh, Graduate Assistantship. Mm -hmm. It's GA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you get to work with professors. Mm -hmm. Like in my business department, I'm working under five professors, mm -hmm. where they get to give me assignments mm -hmm. to do some research, mm -hmm. to do data entry mm -hmm. of their undergrad mm -hmm. uh, classes. Mm -hmm. I also get to mark exams mm -hmm. for undergraduate and assignments for undergraduates. Okay. So part of my time on the week I spend with my professors mm -hmm. and the advantage with that is that they 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 pay like part of my tuition. Mm. Like for you, how mm. much how much are they paying for your tuition as far as graduate assistantship is concerned? How much in dollars? Currently, they are giving me around five thousand dollars per. Five thousand dollars. Yes. Wow. Okay. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to mm -hmm. just get like that. And uh, on top of that, what else does it come with? Uh, I mean, you work with the professors. Mm -hmm. Do you also get paid for that? Yeah, you also get to be paid in two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it a stipend. It's mm -hmm. a small amount they give you, like to cater for general expenses. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Now, other than the graduate assistantship job. What other job do you have in college? Is this the only one? Is that the only job that you have, or do you have something else that you have to do? I'm also doing other two two other jobs. Two other jobs. Okay, yeah. good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Guys, you can hear these things, right? Mm -hmm. So jobs, you know, you can still work on campus. Okay, keep going. Uh -huh. Okay, the other one is called the partial tuition waiver, mm -hmm. where I get to volunteer in the community around the school. Mm -hmm. You can do cleaning of the community around the school. Like mm -hmm. the current semester, I was uh, preparing gardens for a community garden mm -hmm. here in school. Mm -hmm. And the school also gets to give you a certain amount of money for, to for, for, for doing that kind of work. Yeah. How okay. much? How much do you get out of that? It's around 1,200. 1,200? Yeah, per semester. Per semester. And I only work 20 hours per semester of volunteering work. You volunteer 20 hours a semester, you get 1,000. Wow, mm. that's crazy. Now, what what other job? Okay. Through my first, the first week, I, when you come here, the on-campus job you get to apply to. Mm -hmm. You can work in a library, you can mm -hmm. work in a computer lab, mm -hmm. you can work in the dining. Like mm -hmm. at the moment, I'm working in the dining, mm -hmm. where I get to serve students, mm -hmm. I get to clean tables, I mm -hmm. also get to clean the dishes. Yeah. It's quite an interesting job. You get to meet so many students. You, uh -huh. you, you don't, you're not the opportunity to meet outside. Yes. But when they come in the dining, because almost all the students 
eat at the dining you yes. get to meet them you get to meet them uh, you enjoy your, your job yeah. yeah and uh i also used to work the exact same things that you're doing exact i used to have a gene i used mm-hmm. to work as a you know in the dining hall cleaning you know all that stuff you know these are things that a lot of people when you're someone is back home there right mm-hmm. they don't know these things you know they hear like oh now you're cleaning you know you, this kind of jobs people don't expect you to be doing those jobs but mm-hmm. tell them how much does it pay you yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, normally paid in an hour. Uh-huh. It depends how many hours you're working. You're working, huh? Yeah, the minimum wage I'm getting now as a student, you normally get the minimum wage mm-hmm. depending on the state. Yeah. My current state is $7.25 an hour. Okay. Yeah. So you get paid $7.25 an hour mm-hmm. to work on, you know, there in the dining hall and all yeah. that. Good. The places they are clean. Mm-hmm. When you are saying you are cleaning tables, it's not like it's a very good country. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good job. <laughs> it's a good job, right? Yeah. Really yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me I never used to choose things. Like I used to work like crazy when I was like, was when I was in school. Mm-hmm. Okay. So does that take care of your maybe living expenses? You know all those jobs that you do. Does it take care of your living expenses? And uh, talking about living expenses, where are you currently living? Tell us a little bit about that. Currently, I'm staying off campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's like four minutes walk from the school and ten mm-hmm. minutes walk to my classes, mm-hmm. which is cheaper compared to people who stay on campus. On campus, mm-hmm. yeah. The work, the payment I got get from my work. Uh, they normally cater for my rent, mm-hmm. my food, mm-hmm. internet expenses, mm-hmm. and other shopping and utilities. They're able to cater for it. Ah, okay. Yeah. So the accommodation that you have, is it mm-hmm. just for you alone or do you even share with other international students? Tell us a little bit about that. Okay. Before you came here, I remember you telling me it's cheaper to share mm-hmm. than to stay alone. Yes. So I have a roommate from Uganda mm-hmm. where I get, we get to share mm-hmm. in a house which is a two-bedroom house mm-hmm. and we share like kitchen and living room mm-hmm. but each person has his own bedroom mm-hmm. so we get to share we do we normally have a list of shopping every month mm-hmm. and we contribute equally mm-hmm. each month mm-hmm. so it's cheaper compared to living alone mm-hmm. or living on campus okay good mm-hmm. um i know the school that you went to because i went to that school mm-hmm. um it's like in the middle of nowhere it's not like in a big city like here in tampa mm-hmm. uh but how is rent? How much do you have to pay monthly? Okay. Living standards in it's a it's, there's a city called Indiana where my school is in mm-hmm. Pennsylvania. The living standards there are not very high. Mm-hmm. I pay rent. I pay four hundred dollars a month. Mm, okay, yeah. four hundred dollars. Oh, okay. Compared to some cities there in US, you can pay so much higher than that. Yeah, like here in Tampa, you can't really get four hundred accommodation. Mm-hmm. Most mm-hmm. likely about about five fifty to six hundred dollars. For sharing uh, accommodation. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. All right. What else did I have for you? Now, generally speaking, what is it that you've liked about America so far? You know, tell us. Mm-hmm. You know, you've been here for four months. Yeah. You know, you've traveled all the way from Pennsylvania to mm-hmm. Tampa just the mm-hmm. other day. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be with you for a few more days, Christmas mm-hmm. and New Year. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what you've liked about America in general. America, for the people outside there, America is a beautiful country. Mm-hmm. When you arrive there, the airport, the, almost all the places are clean, the roads are very good. Mm-hmm. And the people, like especially in my city where I'm schooling, they're very friendly. Mm-hmm. So I have had a chance like, to interact with them, mm-hmm. exchange ideas and cultures. Mm-hmm. Yeah, also the education system here is quite good compared to a country. You yeah. get to learn a lot and yeah. participate a lot. In class? In class, yeah. Okay, so you have like presentations that you have to do and stuff like that? Almost every class, mm-hmm. there are presentations you have to do. Okay, the arrangement system in, this, in the class is not like our country. We are normally arranged in groups. Mm-hmm. Professor normally divides you into groups. Mm-hmm. And then they can give you, or he or she can give you a topic to discuss among the students mm-hmm. and then you present mm-hmm. also there are a lot of assignments where you are given assignments for research you go and do and then and come and present them in class mm-hmm. 
and the student also get a chance to ask you a question mm -hmm. and you are able to build on that and have confidence of answering those questions mm -hmm. yeah wow. even the like the exams that we normally start earning marks like the first day of the class mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you actually have to contribute you have mm -hmm. to attend classes for mm -hmm. you to have a good grade yes. at the end of the semester yeah now tell uh, talking about grading mm -hmm. how is it how hard is it to get an a because i mean i, I hear a lot of people keep on asking these questions right mm -hmm. like you know how how is the education is it hard mm -hmm. you know because me i can tell you like for, i usually say this kenyan mm -hmm. education is very very tough mm -hmm. uh, i always say that my high school education was the toughest for me mm -hmm. it, i really put in a lot of work in high school i scored mm -hmm. a b plus there's i mean first from form one up to form three i, was, I never used to study but from from three mm -hmm. until from four i was studying like crazy you know for me to get that b plus mm -hmm. and college was also not that easy it was a little bit better than high school mm -hmm. uh, but how is it compared to home how is it here is it easy to get score that a tell us that yeah it's it. very easy to score an a really i remember i got an a minus in my high school back in our country and mm -hmm. i really struggled to get that to get that a minus yes mm -hmm. In the A's in Kenya, they normally start at 70%. And not easy to get that 70%. And it's not easy to get. Yeah. But here an A starts at 90%. Yeah. And most of the students here get an A. As far as you have attended the classes, mm -hmm. you have participated, you have done your assignments and homeworks, and you have done your exams, mm -hmm. they are really not hard. So tell mm -hmm. us, do you mind telling us, what did you get this semester? It's your first semester. What did mm -hmm. you get? We have just finished uh, doing our exams last week mm -hmm. and the results are out now. I mm -hmm. got three A's for my three units. So you did three units, all three A's? Yes. Man, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some of the... You've talked about the things that you like about America, right? Of mm -hmm. course, there are other challenges that you might have faced, right? Mm -hmm. So what are some of the challenges that you faced so far? Mm -hmm. And uh, what did you do to overcome them? Uh, when, when I came in, I came in August, it was mm -hmm. fall, it was a bit warm because mm -hmm. that's when summer was ending. Mm -hmm. But we, as we came to September, October, the weather there started changing, it became chilly. Yes. Because my school is located in the northern part of America, near Canada, mm -hmm. where it's very cold in winter. Yes. Like now it's very cold, it's, yeah. it's like negative 10. It's <laughs> Yeah, okay. Celsius. You're still using the <laughs> Kenyan uh... Oh, in Fahrenheit, <laughs> around okay. 28, 24 uh -huh. there. Uh -huh. So some, so those are some of the challenges I encounter when you are living in the cold areas. Mm -hmm. But you adapt it with time because mm -hmm. you, like when you are wearing warm clothes, yeah. you got to adapt them. Yes. Yeah. Also, when you come in first year, the accent, especially when you're from Africa, mm -hmm. it's sometimes the, the student or the, the professor, they don't understand you that they well. They, they don't understand you. Yeah. yeah. You mm -hmm. also don't get to understand them mm -hmm. that well. That well. So yeah. it takes time. It takes time. Yes. Okay. But within time like now, I think I'm good. I'm understanding them well. Mm -hmm. And they're also able to understand me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. That's good to hear. Yeah. Wow. So tell us, tell the list, I mean, those who are watching us, right? Mm -hmm. So in the Kenya I Lift program, we don't just bring you just for the sake of bringing you as a student. In fact, what we want is anyone who comes through that program, mm -hmm. they can actually be able to graduate and get a job in the IT sector. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So I've been here in, in America for 10 good years. Mm -hmm. And I know the challenges that a lot of our people face in this country. Okay, challenges to do with immigration documents. You know, when you're in Kenya, you don't know these things. You know, when you land here, mm -hmm. you know, you, most of the people, most of our African uh, students who come here, they don't even know, even before they leave their country, they don't know about these things, papers, immigration documents, you know. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the challenges that us Africans face. And uh, this is why we have this program to help out those who are coming through the program. They can be able to get jobs, you know, they can be able to get uh, immigration documents once they graduate, you know, and be able to live and work here legally. Mm -hmm. Because also in this country, there's a lot of illegal immigrants. We have about 12 million illegal immigrants. So you can't just ignore that 
you know those statistics so you have to be you know you have to know about all these things you know as an international student and this is what a lot of people really don't know mm -hmm. so so how has been the training because we train you as you do your master's programs we are training you online just like for example the way you know without violating your immigration status because you came here to study in school and um, you know but you can still learn you know if you want to learn like for example the way you go to YouTube you can just learn things and you know but what how is that training coming up can, can you tell the audience a little bit about that training how has it gone out like for you so far uh, share, share about the training a little bit what are you doing you know all that stuff because they don't know they just know what it, it's kenya elf program mm -hmm. they're just bringing people in the u.s it's not just mm -hmm. about that there's a lot yeah there's a lot more than just bringing you here in the u.s as an international student can you share a little bit about that information please it's true as a i'm also an, a, a, apart from mba i'm doing online course called oracle ebs functional consulting mm -hmm. training mm -hmm. which is part of the kenya airlift program mm -hmm. okay the, that's the main reason why i came here because mba i could have done it in kenya or in mm -hmm. any other part yes but the main reason i came here is to do that it course yeah i remember i started it immediately after orientation mm -hmm. It was my second week after mm -hmm. coming here. Mm -hmm. It's an online course, so you don't like to, you don't need to attend as class. Yeah, you do it. It's it's just as mm -hmm. on the side thing that you have to do as you still pursue your yeah. master's program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like my timetable, I normally wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. read some few chapters of the online course, mm -hmm. then I prepare to work. Mm -hmm. Before my classes, I come again and read the course. Mm -hmm. After classes during the evening, I also do the online a bit of it before I sleep. Yeah, yeah. So you get to do it with other things you're doing, mm -hmm. and it's online. It's not like you have to do in a specific time. You you only you plan yourself. Yeah, yeah. And these are job skills. So how is it? Like this is something that you never really knew about before, right? Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Is this something that you feel like okay this is this is something that you know i should have even have known like way before i, I came here in the u.s can mm -hmm. you tell a little bit more and how how has been your performance so far in that program because we have ex we have some exams that we do right so yeah, how sure. has it been okay i don't have any background in it because mm -hmm. i did an, uh, an undergrad in bachelor of commerce finance option mm -hmm. so i didn't as in I didn't know about the IT opportunities until I joined the Kenya Lead program. Yes. And I, I've gotten to understand that it's a very marketable program here and a very well paying yes. IT job here yes. when you finish the program. Yeah. Okay, so far I've done two exams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, in the in the general ledger. Mm -hmm. And and the pa the pass mark is normally eighty percent. Mm -hmm. You have to do a lot of dedication to that, commit your time. Yes. And so far, I can say it's well because I've passed the two both exams. Good. And I've, I'm now going to the next chapter, which I've started reading. The next module, okay. Yeah, the mo next module. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Yeah, so because a lot of people out there, right, you know, as much, a lot of people, they want to get into the IT industry, right? But they don't even know the challenges that are, because IT, it's, it's not just for anyone out there. You know, I always like telling people, like, you have to be smart. Like you can't just, it can't just be for anyone, right? Sure. I mean, you experience with the program, right? It's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy, right? So I get a lot of people, you know, they want to do this program, you know, because other than just in the Kenya Leaf program, these programs that we train people, we train everybody. If you are in the US and or if in Kenya, if you're in Africa, wherever you are, we do the trainings online. And if you want to get trained, we train on Oracle EBS and robotics process automation. And uh, these are programs, you know, these are job skills, you know, these are not like, you know, master's program. These are job skills that, you know, skills that you're going to need when you're out there working. And mm -hmm. these are really tough skills, you know, to acquire. It's not just for anyone out there, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not easy. That's why I always tell people, you know, I mean, I'm usually very honest, you know. I don't should quote things. I don't want you to come to the program and think, oh, I can kill it. It's not that easy. Mm -hmm. 
right? You really have to have the brains to do it. And because at the end of the day, when you go out there as an IT consultant, I used to work as an IT consultant. I used to work, mm -hmm. to work as a systems analyst for Oracle, working for Fortune 500 companies here mm -hmm. in the US. Mm -hmm. These are companies who spend millions and millions worth of dollars to implement these systems. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine if you go there and you don't know anything, right? You don't know anything. How do you expect to get paid well and yet you don't know how to provide solutions to these clients, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what a lot of people, they really don't understand, you know, that you actually have to know, you know, you have to have those skills, you know, you have to understand how the systems work so that you can be able now to provide the best solutions to the clients. Otherwise, you know, everybody will be doing those kind of, you know, will be having those kind of skills and going out there and actually making some good money, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, that's what, something that I wanted to add because, you know, I get a lot of people coming to me and some other dropping off just because they really don't understand this, this thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, finally, I don't want us to go, you know, along because we need to watch the Daring Abroad also. Uh, we, we don't even know how it's going to be like, uh, you know, <laughs> we also want to watch it as the rest of the people. Mm -hmm. Now, um what what would you tell anyone out there who knows about the kenya airlift program but they are still not ready to join what would you tell them because see also because the fact that we do our business online mm -hmm. a lot of people there's a lot of that mistrust of online businesses especially with us africans and all that mm -hmm. and um yeah yeah, we usually don't trust ourselves that much. I think also because we have a history of, you know, uh, as Africans, history of, you know, conning other, others and all, ourselves and, you know, all that stuff, right? Yeah. So, so, and I understand that. But what would you tell anyone who is out there who have heard about the airlift program, mm -hmm. but they haven't decided to join us yet? What would you tell them? What would you tell them, you know, just to finish off, to finish up this uh, conversation? Okay. Honestly speaking, if it was not for this program, the Kenya Elite program, mm -hmm. I would not be here in the United States. Okay. So many of you dream to come here because it's a good country. Yes. But this program guided me from step, step to step yes. up to now. Yes. It took me like a year to come here, as I said earlier. Yes. And you get to, they get to guide you through the GMAT exams, mm -hmm. the application of the school. Mm -hmm. You also get to guide you through the visa interview. Mm -hmm. And you also get to know what to expect when you come here in America. Yes. Yeah, which is a big deal. Yeah, because, it's a good deal. Yeah, big mm -hmm. deal because a lot of people, they don't know anything. Yeah, yes. even some of my friends were from different countries, different parts of Africa. Yes. The first few weeks and months, they, they really Took, they had so many challenges because yes. it was a very new thing to them in the US. Yes. But when you you come with this program, you like know everything what to expect. Yeah. So, well, everybody who is out there in the in Kenya or in Africa interested in joining this program, okay, would like uh, to encourage them to come to come through this program mm -hmm. because you get to learn a lot. Yes. Apart from graduating with a master's program, you also graduate with IT skills. And then also help you get jobs out there. Jobs out there. Good. And the jobs will be able to give you uh, a green card through job employment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you so much for, you know, being here, team. All right. We really, you know, we want to, we'll be showing you around Tampa. Okay. We are happy, you know, to be with you, my family and everybody. You know, mm -hmm. we want you to enjoy, feel at home, yeah, all right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I know it's still your holidays in the U.S., but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just just enjoy. This is Florida. Mm -hmm. We'll go to the beach. We'll do a lot of things. The other Kenya Lift uh, program beneficiaries coming in a, in a week or so. So we're going to have some good time, all right? Mm -hmm. So um, that was Tim, all right, who is one of our beneficiaries of the Kenya Airlift program. Tim is a master's student and uh, is studying at Indiana University of Pennsylvania, which is based in Pennsylvania State. And actually, this is the school that I went to about 10 years ago. All right. So, Tim, uh, you have me, 
right? Yeah. And uh, you know, you you know, at least you know what to expect and all that. In case you have any problems, you know, mm-hmm. I'm still there to you know to help you out and all those things. So you're you're very lucky. Mm-hmm. Me when I was here, I didn't know anybody. So you know, I figured things out on my own, right? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, thank you so much for being here and uh, thank you everybody out there, those who tune in into this program. Uh, I will see you next time. Don't forget to watch The Daring Abroad. We are watching it uh, also, you know, from on the internet, from YouTube, I believe. Yeah, yeah we'll watch it on YouTube. All right, guys, see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.